Hi, I'm Lindsay with the Heart for All Students, and I wanted to go over a few tips that I have for helping your not so compliant child work on spelling activities and handwriting activities and getting them to do some of that writing and spelling work that is really, really challenging. If you have a child with ADHD or they might be a little oppositional, some might call them demand avoidant. If you have a child with ADHD, um, autism, they may not have a diagnosis at all, but they might really, really struggle with taking directions from you. And that's what happens in my house. And now my dog is sitting here scratching. So let's take a look over here. This is just fun. Hey, and there's the Barbie. And there's my dog. Okay. Charlie, sit. Okay, so I just created this blog post where I gave you a nine spelling activities for ADHD and other kids who don't wanna do school. And that's basically my way of describing any kid that's like my kid, which is the kid that doesn't wanna take direction at all and tends to do better if they are able to have agency and do things more independently. So, so here's a few ideas. Okay, number one, making wish lists. The best thing that we can do when we have a child that struggles with taking direction is give them inherent motivation to want to do what you want them to do. So for my kid, it's really hard to have them sit and do a workbook of boring spelling activities or boring lists of, wor of words. But if I tell him to go to a catalog full of toys, he's all about that. So grab a catalog, order catalogs from Target, from Amazon, save them. If you go to Aldi, grab those little pamphlets on the way out from Aldi and save them all up. They always have toys in there and have your child make wish lists of different ideas and different toys and games and anything that he or she wants. So they can just make wish lists. My kid, he loves Chuggington. Um, he's been in the Chuggington phase for a while. And so every time he asks me for a Chuggington, I give him, I keep these little pamphlets. You can see these little pamphlets I have here from old Chuggington sets that I purchased for him. And I would just hang on to these little, little inserts. And then if he, um, and then I would just kind of drop it on the table and say, hey buddy, why don't you tell me which ones you wanna get next? And he would just make lists. And so you can see he started practicing writing the names of the different characters that he wanted. Keep the inserts for Legos. If there's Lego um, activities that your son or your daughter likes to do, um, keep those little inserts and have them. If you feel comfortable letting your child go on Amazon, let them go on Amazon and start searching for toys and games and whatever that they want and have them make a Christmas list and a birthday list. In our house, anytime somebody asks for something, it's put it on the list. That's the way I've been able to get my child to practice those fine motor skills and become inherently motivated to write. The other thing that I do in my house um, is we use our iPhone for spelling activities. And when I say spelling activities, I'm not just talking about spelling words. I'm also talking about phonics and learning how to the learning spelling patterns, learning how to read, these all kind of come together. So you can use your iPhone for spelling activities. I do it all the time. So anytime my kid asks to use my phone, if he asks to go into YouTube Kids and type in Chuggington or whatever he wants, Bluey or whatever he's into, Lego, uh, Transformers. Hey, mommy, how do you spell Chuggington? And this is something I really wanted to explain to you what I do. And I've been doing this for years with him, but it's just, you, you might think this is so simple and this is so... Um, you might think it's so simple that it's not actually helpful, but it actually really is if you're consistent about these things. And I'm talking about over time. I'm not saying in one year, I'm talking about years of just engaging in these activities and being really intentional with how you allow your child to use your phone, for example. So he say, mommy, how do you spell Chuggington? And I always reply with this. I would say, CH says ch. And he would, he's gotten into the habit of CH says ch. So he writes CH, uh. He'll write the U, he'll type the U in, g, g and he'll do two Gs. Ing, I-N-G spells, or I-N-G says ing. I-N-G says ing. And he will get into the habit of knowing if he wants to spell anything that has ing in it, it's gonna have I-N-G. So I'm using his memory. A lot of kids with ADHD, autism, FASD, um, a lot of kids with have really, really strong memories um, and strong visual memories or just strong memories in general. So I use a lot of the fact, the fact that he can basically memorize anything to help him gain these skills. They're very unconventional, but what I'm doing is I'm offering the, him the digraph letters. So a digraph is like two or more letters that makes a particular sound in the English language. CH is a digraph. Ch so I say CH says ch. We've been doing this for years. So he's learning these digraphs 
in a way that's motivating to him. So this is one way we do it. I do the same thing with the Roku or the smart TV search. I'm really, really intentional with how I use technology to help my resistant child learn these skills about reading and spelling. It says, mommy, how do I spell transformers? I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna have him use that remote control. And as annoying as it is to use the search button on a television, it's a way that I could get him to be motivated enough to start recognizing these patterns and how we spell things and get him motivated to do it. So if he says, how do I spell transformers? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give him that first blend. I'm gonna say, tr, tr, what is that? Tr, and he'll say, t, t r, an, a n says an, s, you know, and that's how I go through it. And I just kind of give him each phoneme. If he needs help, I give him help. But basically I'm really intentional with these moments. The other thing we do is we modify playing board games. So if we're playing Sorry, or if your kid's younger, Candyland, or any game that your kid is playing, and you can insert these throughout your school day, you know, if we're playing Sorry as a family, I might have for every turn that my son is gonna take, I might have him write a spelling word for each turn. And I tend to buy, excuse me, I tend to try to make this seem as fun as it as fun as possible. And I'll use these like large, really large, colorful post-its. Hold on, they're right here on Amazon. I use these post-its. They're huge and they're super, super fun. My kid loves them. So I take these little post-it notes and he will just write on these post-it notes one word. So it might be a word from a book that we're reading um, out of his readers. And so I might say, how do you spell jump as we play sorry? And he will just write jump one word, but he's motivated because he's going to play a game and he loves those silly, bright colored cards. Um, so it's just, it's just an easy way to just throw in a little bit of fine motor skills and spelling sounds, all that kind of stuff. Um, I also have a 57 best educational board games. I have a post that you can find on my website, aheartforallstudents.com. If you want some more suggestions on educational board games that are really fantastic to use for your kids. Um, the other thing that we do in our home, and we've been doing it for a long time, this is actually a few years ago, is I pass notes with my son. Um, a lot of our kids that have ADHD, autism, um, might even just struggle with dyslexia or other learning challenges. These kids tend to hear lots of messages from the world and sometimes even from us. Me as a parent, I get frustrated if I ask my child to do something and he doesn't do it after the 50th time I've asked him. Um, and so sometimes relationally it can be really challenging. So this one has been really helpful, not only in getting him to just pick up that pencil and write, but also in creating relationship and safety between the two of us. So we just pass notes and I would just take little pieces of paper and I would take these little notes and I'd write something like, I love you, buddy. And then he would write me a note back, mommy, I love you. Um, I might even say something like, for dinner, we're having chicken. And he might say something, I like ice cream. I don't care what the content is. It's more the idea, again, of getting him familiar with using words to communicate, um, written word to communicate. So that's real helpful. Another idea is play hide and seek with spelling words. Put spelling words on pieces of paper or note cards. Just hide them around um, a particular room in your house. After you do that, you can have a little piece of paper that you just take and you just write on a white piece of paper, write 10 spelling words or five spelling words that are going to be attached, that are going to be associated with the cards that you spread around the house and just have your child take that piece of paper and he's going to look for the first word. The first word is jump. The second word is slide. The third word is whatever you are working on, whatever word you want him to work on. And just by having that piece of paper, seeing the word, reading it out loud, and then finding the word. What I do after he finds the word is I have him tell me what is this word and spell it out loud. And if he's spelling it by looking at the looking at the letters, that's fine. I just want a more and more exposure and more familiarity with words, with looking at print, all the things. So that's real fun. Um, and yes, these seem uh, kind of like preschool level activities. These are preschool level activities. But when you have a kid who is more neurodivergent, um, has a harder time with learning, do what works, do what works. This will yield fruit. These foundational skills and these foundational um, things that seem so simple and um, almost like trivial, they're actually really, really helpful, especially if you're dealing with a child who's highly oppositional. You only have so much capacity. Fighting with your kid all day long, it's, it's, not, it's not fruitful for anybody, we all know. 
Um, the other thing is if your child has a has challenges with maybe dysgraphia, fine motor issues that they're working on in occupational therapy, instead of making them write with pencil and, or a pen and a piece of paper, have them use letter stickers. Just buy a bunch of like alphabet letter stickers from Michaels or from Amazon and use letter stickers. And you just, um, you can have them, you can either write their spelling words on a piece of paper and just have them stick the spelling words, excuse me, stick, stick the letters on each spelling word to actually create the word instead of using their pencil and pen. But you have to understand by pulling off those stickers, they're using those fine motor skills and they, they feel less threatened by using stickers. So that's more fun. And they're still learning how to spell. Now you might say, oh, my child is eight. This is so silly. He should be, he should be able to write by now. Who cares what he should be able to do? Don't worry about outside benchmarks. You need to think about what your goal is for your child. So if you want your child to learn how to spell words, then you might have to think outside the box because if the goal is spelling, not necessarily handwriting, then focus on what your goal is. If my goal is spelling and putting letter stickers, giving him stickers to use to create those spelling words, if that's going to get him to do it, that's meeting the objective of helping him learn how to spell. You can do the same thing with letter stamps. I love these letter stamps from Melissa and Doug. We have all of them at my house. They're super fun. And we use these all the time to write spelling words, to if he gets into a new cartoon or show that he really likes, we'll spell everybody's name. And even though those might not be particular spelling words, he's still becoming familiar with spelling patterns and digraphs, understanding CH says ch, understanding that SH says sh, you know, the, you know, you can understand. So he's starting to become familiar with these things by allowing him to find things that he's really inherently excited about. And that helps him and that helps and that helps him and that helps me get make progress in the area of spelling, reading, phonics, writing. And the last suggestion is play games, play word-based games. There's so many board games out there that you can use to help with those spelling patterns. Boggle Junior, Scrabble or Scrabble Junior, Zingo. Again, I have 57 best educational board games on my website. You can check those out. There's so many different board games you can use that are less threatening to your child because if your child goes into fight or flight when he thinks he has to do school, but if he can play, you open up that prefrontal cortex, that area of the brain that is able to receive and process information and make use of it, you open that up when we're not stressed out. Games are a great way to do that. Read the rest of this on my website, aheartforallstudents.com. This is nine spelling activities for kids with ADHD or kids that just don't want to do any school whatsoever. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at lindsay at aheartforallstudents.com. And please um, come to the website, check out all the resources. 